Hello? Hi, Daddy. Hello? Are you ready for the interview? I'm ready. All right. I was hoping that we could start out. I know who you are since you're my dad. But if you could just introduce yourself quickly and describe some of your background in nuclear power. Sure. My name is uh, Mark Mervine. I graduated from the U.S. Naval Academy in 1981 and went into the Navy Nuclear Power Program. I was uh, in submarines, and while I was in the Navy, I qualified on two different types of Navy nuclear power plants and served as an instructor in the Navy nuclear power program. Okay, and then after you got out of the Navy? After seven years of active duty, I went into the reserves, and I stayed in the reserves, and I retired as a commander in the Navy reserves. I went to work initially for Wisconsin Electric, uh, which has a, uh, which at that time had a two-unit Westinghouse pressurized water reactor in Tourvers, Wisconsin. Okay. While I was there, I um, completed my SRO certification, which allowed me um, to do uh, senior review and oversight uh, okay. as a member of the plant management staff. And I also um, qualified and served as a shift technical advisor, which is a position that was added in the nuclear power industry after Three Mile Island. That is a degreed engineer uh, position that's available to the on-shift crew on a 24-hour basis. Uh, some plans to do it on an eight-hour watch. At that time, Wisconsin Electric did it on a 24-hour watch. So I would actually um, stay at the plant for 24 hours. We had a place where we could sleep. And my job was to advise the crew whenever um, they uh, needed advice um, on what was happening with the plant. Great. And you... After a few years at yep. Wisconsin Electric, I went and um, to work for Vermont Yankee, where I also completed the SRO certification, Senior Reactor Certification, which allowed me to um, do state level reviews as a member of the plant management staff. And I also served on the Offsite Review Committee, which is a, uh -huh. a, a very high level um, committee for the main Yankee nuclear plant until it closed, and mm -hmm. also Vermont Yankee. Excellent. So you're qualified to talk a little bit about nuclear power, it sounds like. I can talk a little bit about nuclear power, yes. Okay, excellent. So my first question for you is really basic, since maybe people are not familiar with this, but what can you just describe quickly what is a nuclear power plant? Yes, I can. Um, may, maybe what I should do first is explain what a power plant is. Sure. So the vast majority of power plants in the world um, generate steam by some method, some by burning oil, some by burning coal, they heat up water, they make steam, that steam then powers a turbine, okay. and attached to the turbine you have a generator, and that generator generates electricity, mm -hmm. and through transformers is connected to the electrical power grid. Um, so in that respect, a nuclear power plant is a lot like uh, other power plants in that you have this turbine that's steam-driven with a generator that's attached um, to a transformer mm -hmm. and then to the grid. The difference is what a nuclear power plant does is it generates the, depending on the type of the plant, hot water or steam mm -hmm. um, by the fissioning of uranium. Right. And that's providing the power, basically. So you, you, there's, two, <clears throat> there's two major types of nuclear power plants in the Western world. Mm -hmm. One is a pressurized water reactor okay. where the water is kept at high pressure and doesn't boil and there's a heat exchanger. Mm -hmm. And on the other side of the heat exchanger, that water is allowed to boil, which generates the steam. And then you have a boiling water reactor where the water in the reactor actually boils and generates steam directly. Okay. And that steam is used to power the turbine. So another question I have for you is, one of the main problems that they're having in Japan is they're not able to cool the power plant. So can you explain yep. why a nuclear power plant needs to be cooled? Absolutely. So um, what, what happens in a nuclear power plant is you, the, the atoms um, fission or split in half, mm -hmm. and that generates heat. Um, there's, there's also other um, materials that are created, I don't want to get into, into too much detail and confuse people, that um, continue to decay, okay. and uh, that also generates heat. So for some period of time after you shut down a nuclear power plant, you have to continue to cool the reactor core okay. because you're still, I mean, to begin with, it was very warm because you were generating either uh, hot water under a lot of pressure or steam, 
and it needs to be cooled, obviously, uh, down. Right. And be, um, because of the decay of these materials in the fuel, they also continue to generate heat for some period of time until uh, the, the decay um, trails off. So they've so actually shut, shut down the plant in Japan, is what you're saying, and now they're just trying to cool it. Okay, well, if you're talking specifics, um, the, the, the plant that we're aware of that um, is in the most difficulty right now mm-hmm. is the Fukushima plant, Yep. Unit 1. That plant is a general electric boiling water reactor. Okay. Um, it, it first achieved criticality in 1970. Um, it's similar to uh, a couple of other plants that we have here in New England. It's mm-hmm. uh, very similar to uh, Pilgrim which is down to Massachusetts and Vermont Yankee in Vermont. Okay. And um, that plant was automatically shut down when the earthquake occurred. Okay. And for about the first hour, uh, they were running on their diesel generator. Yes. Um, once the plant shuts down, it has two ways to get electricity. One is from the grid. Yes. And the other is from emergency diesel generators that they have on site. Okay. In this case, because of the magnitude of the earthquake, the grid basically went dark. So okay. they were operating on their diesel generators, and everything was functioning as it should be. Okay. But then, uh, 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 based on news reports, about an hour after the earthquake and the shutdown, the tsunami hit and flooded the plant yep. where the diesel generators were. And that caused them to lose their diesel generator power and reduce them to their emergency battery backup power only. And that wasn't quite enough to do, have the cooling capability that they needed? Uh, the emergency backup on the batteries gives them, you know, very, very limited capability. Mm-hmm. So right. they were having a very difficult time keeping the, the plant cool. Do they sort of have to go to smaller cooling systems, smaller pumps, and that sort of thing that can be run off the battery? Not their normal I, cooling I don't know system? The, I don't know the specifics of that plant mm-hmm. and what, what they might have done um, in Japan. Obviously... Japan being in a in an earthquake zone probably had additional requirements right. for the plant that we wouldn't have to have in, in other places around the world. Right. But in any event, uh, based on news reports, they did have some type of cooling cap- uh, cooling capability using their their battery power. The problem, of course, is the batteries are only good for a few hours. And the news report said that the military, the Japanese military, was actually trying to get in replacement batteries to cool the plant. I'm sure they've continued that effort, but I haven't heard any update on that in the news. So the, the, the report that I saw in the news said exactly that, that they were trying to supply the plant with additional batteries and um, a portable diesel generator. Right. Well, I hope they're successful soon. So how are nuclear power plants in general built to withstand earthquakes and tsunamis? You maybe not don't know about this since you worked on power plants that are more tectonically stable regions, but are there sort of specific requirements for natural there, disasters? There, there, there are, and depending on depending on what the worst case scenario would be anticipated for an earthquake, mm-hmm. the, the requirements are different. Right. So um, probably the best example I could give is um, I once participated in an, in an inspection of the Trojan nuclear power plant, which was in Oregon. Yes. That plant, that plant has been shut down now, but compared to the plants that I had worked on in Wisconsin and in Vermont, they had a, had a lot more requirements on them for earthquake protection. I see. So uh, the way you do that is there's um, a lot more support for all the equipment, um, all kinds of hydraulic dampers, which allow the equipment to move back and forth um, without breaking. Yes. Um, I know in Japan they have a requirement that all the plants have to be built on bedrock. Mm-hmm. So they actually have to um, go down to bedrock in order to begin to build the supports of the plant. I see. Um, so, yeah, there, there's numerous precautions that are taken. And like I said, there were probably additional backup system requirements that were required by the Japanese government right. uh, for those plants being in, in an earthquake zone. But this was just such an enormous earthquake. I mean, this is sort of... Um, I, I don't think they've released the official report yet, but this is, you know, is probably in the top five biggest earthquakes. So even if they prepared for the absolute worst, this is something that really stressed all of their systems and backups, I imagine. Well, I think, I, I think really the key here was not so much the earthquake. By yes. all reports, the plant, the plants functioned exactly as they were supposed to do in the earthquake. Right. They shut down automatically. When the grid was lost, their diesel generator started, and everything was fine. What, what 
really put us in the situation we're in now of the tsunami as a result of the earthquake, right. but not the earthquake itself. So what happened with the explosion that occurred earlier today? Do you know anything about that? Well, I, I can only um, comment on, on what I've read in news reports and, and a little bit of speculation based on my, my knowledge of how nuclear power plants work. Okay. So, uh, again, in this case, this was a boiling water reactor. So when it's operating, normally the reactor is full of water to a certain point, and then above that, steam. So the core is kept covered in water, but above that, steam is generated, and that steam goes through pipes normally, turns the turbine, and then is cooled and returned back to the reactor. Okay. Because, because they are, are very limited backup capability and only to get probably a, a small percentage of the water that they would normally be able to um, pump into the reactor to cool it, they were probably allowing the water to boil, which you wouldn't do normally during a shutdown. Right. But, but by allowing the water to boil, you're taking heat away from the reactor and thereby cooling it. I see. Because of the power, the lack of power, you know, they wouldn't be able to um, use their um, normal and, and backup systems to remove this steam and cool it and return it to the reactor because there was no power. So they were probably trying to um, vent this steam um, into um, the buildings at the plant. If they could vent a little bit of steam, add a little bit of cool water, they could keep um, the reactor cool enough to keep it from melting down. I see. And I guess the big question that everyone has today is, is the explosion or any of the, the damage that, I guess there hasn't been too much damage to the planet, it's just overheating. Um, do you think any of this is causing nuclear leakage? And if so, is that a big problem? So I've actually um, looked at the before and after picture uh, from the explosion that's uh, available on the uh, news. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, they, they have an extremely serious situation.